The Victorian novel is one of those books that you keep on your bookshelf to tell people that you've read, or they're the six to 800 page books that you keep wanting to read, but you keep getting bored at 50 pages. What made people so crazy about these books? What was it about them that kept people's attentions and made them so popular at the time of their publishing? And why is it that people don't read them as much today or can't appreciate them? A lot of this is to do with how we perceive our time today compared to how people perceive their time in the past. It's not just the pace of life itself. It's just that people are so not used to boredom. They're not used to silence. They're not used to the slowness. And reading these novels um, today can drive somebody insane, can make them crazy. If you've ever met someone who's read at least one of these classic novels, they will talk about it for ages. They will see the characters and every person that they meet in their life. They will reference back to it whenever something interesting or complicated happens to their own lives. And that's the magic of these Victorian novels. The purpose of these novels is not their plot. It's more about the vibe, the aesthetic, the characters, and the social life that is represented in these books. What's interesting is, even though the social life they're showing is from 100 or 200 years ago, it's very similar to today because even though technology changes, politics change, countries change, people don't change. Human nature is consistent. That's what these books have even more to say today than they did when they were written. If you think about your favorite TV show or movie, you don't necessarily watch it for the plot or the story. You watch it more because of its environment and its vibe. And that's why retellings of these same movies, so if they made a new Godfather today, would be underwhelming and not as special because usually when they retell these stories, they cannot recapture the vibe that actually caught people. So when people enjoy Charles Dickens, for example, or Dostoevsky, it's not necessarily the stories that they're enjoying as much as the aesthetic or the vibe that the author is able to create. So when, when you're reading a Victorian novel, what it asks you to do is to enjoy life and the stories of human people at the pace that human people actually live, not necessarily at the breakneck speed that is shown in modern Hollywood movies and TV shows. If you, um, if you have little children in your life, you might know about the show Cocomelon. And the reason that that show has been lauded by child psychologists everywhere as being extremely dangerous to young children is because every three seconds of that show, the clip changes. When the clip changes, um, the child feels like there's something new on the screen, even though it's the same scene and the same characters. So what this does to the child's brain is it wires the child's brain to constantly seek novelty. Children who have, um, who have a lot of screen time under the age of three, especially with TV shows like Coco Melon or any of these other quickly changing cartoons that are popular today, um, they tend to have a lot more aggression. They tend to have a lot more temper tantrums. These children suffer a great deal with ADHD. The reason for that is that this kind of media and these stories and the way that these shows are set up train the child to expect novelty at every three seconds. And that just doesn't happen in real life. So when they don't experience this novelty in real life, they get angry. The same, I think, is happening to people today with the kinds of books we're reading, the kinds of TV shows we're watching, and the movies that we're exposed to. We are also expecting novelty every three seconds. Just think about TikTok and even Instagram reels. They train our brains to expect new experiences, new colors, vibrancy every single time that their brain might be getting a little bit bored or a little bit used to the environment that they're seeing. This is really dangerous for us as well. And I think it could explain a lot of the mental illness that adults today face. Um, and so I'm not saying that Victorian novels are a cure to mental illness, but I'm just saying that if you get bored reading books, you should be doing it even more. You should lean into that boredom. You should lean into the slowness that makes you so uncomfortable and start to find the beauty in it. And maybe 
you will begin to appreciate the slowness of life a little bit more. Maybe you will become more patient. Maybe you'll be able to do those things in life that require patience in order to accomplish. I hope that you join me in my book club where we talk about Victorian novels and the beautiful scenes that they have, the wonderful characters, and just the gorgeous writing so that it's not lost to the sands of time. Thank you.